Now this is the second Sunday in our worship series titled Restart. The, the detail, some of the details of, and scripture are in the bulletin and uh, there's also going to be some special music coming up on, on February 1st. We'll have a, a, a day where, our, where we will sing some, some the choir and we will be invited to sing some gospel music. So we have some good things coming up, exciting things and, and we're looking forward to uh, delving in what it means to restart. Today, let's talk about something that is at the heart of life, relationships. From the beginning, God's intent for humanity was that, that was, uh, God's intent for humanity was that we be in relationship with one another and with God. God's intention and God's desire for us is that we not be alone in this world. Now, there are all sorts of human relationships, friends, partners, spouses, siblings, parent, child. There are business and professional relationships, family, church relationships, community, school, work relationships. There's social and social media relationships, long distance. And when relationships are healthy and whole, they are truly life-giving and freeing, and they reflect the best that God intended for us. However, and, and we all know this, when relationships in any context are not healthy, they can suck the life right out of you. Indeed, some of the deepest joy and satisfaction in life comes from being in relationship. And some of the deepest pain and suffering comes from being in relationships. The Bible is filled with stories of relationships, healthy relationships, perhaps like that of Mary and Joseph who figured out a way to make things work in their unique life. Unhealthy relationships, many of those, like the relationship between brothers Cain and Abel where jealousy led to murder. And then there's the complex relationships in the Bible, those relationships, relationships with many ups and downs, like the relationships that we see unfolding in the expansive narrative of God's chosen people and their descendants, Abraham and Sarah, Isaac and Rebecca, Jacob and Rachel. Today's reading is part of that larger story of relationship. It's, it's a story of Jacob, Jacob's son Joseph, and Joseph's relationships with his brothers. It's a long story, actually a novel. It spans chapters 37 to 50 in the book of Genesis, and it's a good read, and I wish we had time to read it right now and talk about it, but go home and read it, and, and you'll see what I mean. But here's a summary of just part of that story. You might recall that Joseph was the favorite son of Jacob, and he knows it, and he lets his brothers know it. And they get tired of Joseph always rubbing in, rubbing their noses in the fact that he is the favorite. And so in a jealous fit of rage, Joseph's brothers have him sold into slavery and tell their father, Jacob, that their brother Joseph is dead. But years later, a lot of things happen in the meantime. Joseph ends up at the court of Pharaoh the king of Egypt, where eventually he rises to the top level of leadership and, at the, and he is put in charge of food distribution in the time of famine in the land. People come throughout the lands to receive food and one day Joseph recognizes in the food line his brothers. Now they would have never expected to see him, of course, so he sees them and recognizes them long before they know who he is. Joseph tricks them a bit and, uh, and plays a little bit with, it, with them in not very good ways, but perhaps he learned something from his own father who was quite a trickster himself. But then Joseph sees that his brothers are genuinely sorry for what they did to him many years before, and so he reveals his identity to them. The Bible tells the story, this part of the story, like this. And I'll be reading from the translation called the message. Listen for God's word. Joseph spoke to his brothers. I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? 
But his brothers didn't say a word. They were speechless. They couldn't believe what they were hearing and who they were seeing. Come closer to me, Joseph said to his brothers. They came closer. I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But don't feel badly. Don't blame yourselves for selling me. God was behind it. God sent me here ahead of you to save lives. There has been a famine in the land with no plowing or harvesting. And God sent me on ahead to pave the way and make sure there was a remnant in the land to save your lives in an amazing act of deliverance. Hurry back to my father. Tell him, your son Joseph says that I am the master of Egypt. Come as fast as you can and join me. I'll give you a place to live where you'll be close to me. You, your children, your grandchildren, your flocks, your herds, anything you can think of. I'll take care of you there completely. You won't want for a thing. Then Joseph threw himself on his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. And Joseph wept on his neck. Then he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Only then were the brothers able to talk with him. The word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> 